Hello and welcome to another teaching from 119 Ministries. Our ministry believes that the whole Bible is true and directly applicable to our lives today. If you would like to know more about what we believe and teach, please visit us at testeverything.net. We hope that you enjoy studying and testing the following teaching. The question is simply this, are all believers, including women, to wear seat seats, or is it just the men that are commanded to do so? Since sinning is defined as breaking the commandments of God, and loving God is defined as observing His commandments, shouldn't we agree that there is some sense of urgency in correctly understanding the scope and application of this commandment? There are two instances in the law of God in which we find the commandment to wear seat seats, or tassels. Numbers 15. Again, Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel. Tell them to make tassels on the corners of their garments throughout their generations, and to put a blue thread in the tassels of the corners. And you shall have the tassel, that you may look upon it, and remember all the commandments of Yahweh, and do them, and that you may not follow the harlotry to which your own heart and your own eyes are inclined, and that you may remember and do all my commandments, and be holy for your God. Deuteronomy 22. You shall make tassels on the four corners of the clothing with which you cover yourself. This is a unique commandment, as this commandment is designed to assist us in remembering to observe all commandments and thus be holy for our God. Thus, if the premise and purpose of the commandment is established as such, logically we should conclude that the intent of the commandment should include women as well. If we were to test such logic to Scripture, it seems as though it would make sense to determine how the phrase children of Israel is applied as it relates to other commandments. Here are a couple examples. Leviticus 11. Speak to the children of Israel, saying, These are the animals which you may eat among all the animals that are on the earth. Certainly we know that the commandments governing what God defines as food and not food also applies to women. Leviticus 18. Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, I am Yahweh your God. This opening statement leads into the commandments speaking against incest and several other commandments. Again, we already know that these commandments are also intended for women. The very same Hebrew word that we have been reading for children, or sometimes translated as sons, is the same in Leviticus 11.2 and Leviticus 18.2 as it is for the Tzitzit's commandment in Numbers 15. In just these examples, it is clear that the children of Israel is intended to address every Israelite, just like Numbers 15, 37 through 40 says. So why then is Numbers 15, 37 through 40 uniquely interpreted to be a commandment solely intended for males? The unfortunate answer is that it seems to simply be a doctrine of tradition. At some point in history, the commandment became nullified for women because of tradition. As we should already know, the scribes and the Pharisees were the common offenders of teaching such tradition and doctrines that nullified the law of Moses. See Mark chapter 7, for example. So if someone suggests that women are to not wear tzitzis because of the Hebrew word for sons or children is being used in Numbers 15, then by their very own logic and hermeneutics, women also have every right to eat pig and lobster while not wearing their tzitzis. We are not trying to be ridiculous in saying that. We are simply illustrating that the same Hebrew word is being used in Numbers 15, as well as Leviticus 11. And we cannot pick and choose how we apply it to different commandments just for the sake of tradition. Jesus, his Hebrew name being Yeshua, attempted to correct the scribes and Pharisees in such error throughout his ministry. For example, let's look at Mark chapter 7 now, in verse 6. He answered and said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. In verse 9, he said to them, All too well you reject the commandment of God, that you may keep your tradition. Verse 13, Making the word of God of no effect through your tradition which you have handed down, and many such things you do. It is the word of God that we are to follow, not the doctrine and traditions of men. Even in Mark 7.10 specifically, we see that Yeshua is appealing to what was written by Moses as the Word of God. 
We must remember that it is every word that came out of the mouth of God which was food for us. He also taught us to teach all nations to obey everything, not just some things that he commanded. Matthew 28. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Our Messiah Yeshua commanded us to observe and do what is read out of Moses' seat, but not do the traditions and doctrines that are against and nullify the word of God. Matthew 23. Then Yeshua spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, that observe and do. But do not do according to their works, for they say and do not do. The Pharisees and the scribes would read straight out of the Torah to the people, but they would practice their traditions and commandments of men that were contrary to the law of Moses. The consistent theme throughout the ministry of Yeshua was that the true disciples should observe, do, and teach the law of God as written by Moses. If we start adding to or taking away from the word of God to satisfy our own traditions and commandments of men, then we are no better than the Pharisees whose righteousness we are to exceed. Matthew 5.20 For I say to you, that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 23, 28. Even so you outwardly appear righteous unto men, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Thus, as it relates to whether seat seats are to be worn by males and females, it appears that the doctrine that declares that only men are to wear seat seats ultimately has no biblical support and strongly appears to be in Mark 7 and Matthew 23 territory. Examine these things for yourself to determine whether these things are true. We hope that this study has blessed you. And remember, continue to test everything. Shalom. It is because of you, our generous supporters, who make it possible to offer these high-quality teachings completely free of charge. If you feel led to support 119 Ministries so that we can continue this effort, please visit testeverything.net and click on the Support 119 tab. Learn how you can partner with us to take the whole Word of God to the nations.